Now we come to the seagoing or maritime part of the uh, collection and uh, uh, we represent that in uh, these corking tools. These are to put the <coughs> oakum in the deck planks uh, of boats and the planking at the side in order to make sure that the joints are seaworthy so there's no ingress of water. And this is a whole range of tools made by Warden Payne. Uh, certainly uh, no later than the 1930s. So these are quite old in spite of them being unused. And there's a whole range of these tools that go together uh, to get in all the different parts and make sure that the, the joints of the ship are watertight. Uh, the other two representations we have are a hammer, which is known as a ship's maul. And this quite elegant one. A ship's mauls have a, a wide diameter flat face and a point end. And these are point ends are used for removing shackle pins. So when they say uh, anchors away uh, or whatever it is, they uh, knock the shackle pin out and the, the anchor drops into the seabed and stops the ship. However, before that's actually done and the ship's coming uh, into uh, shallower waters, we have to have this device here, which is uh, for measuring the depth of water underneath a ship. And this is done by, this is known as a lead. And what it actually is, it's a, 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 a quite a sizable weight, probably weighing about 10 pounds. In the bottom, it is hollow there, a hollow recess. And they put tallow in that. So there's a man in the front end of the ship, the bow, and he will drop this over the side and it will go down to the bottom of the seabed and the chain that's attached to it is measured with little tallies like that and that tells him the depth of how much chain is, has been run out so it tells him the depth of water under the ship but what this tallow does when that touches the seabed when they bring it up again they can look at that and that will tell them whether the condition of the seabed, whether it's sand or whatever material there is on it, and gives them a good indication of whether they're going to be in deep trouble or not. So uh, this was one of the last sounding chains uh, that James Chesterman made just before they finished uh, around the year 2000. Lastly on um, boats, as different from maritime is this very intriguing knife here which is listed in the catalogue of knives many many unusual names are used and you don't know whether it's the shape of the knife or what it was used for and you can never be sure what they're telling you has any reference to actually what the knife is actually for. But this particular knife in the catalogue was known as a canoe knife and I thought it might be sort of it's that shape and you could say it was canoe shape or whatever and I didn't know what, it, what its purpose was. However on a television programme with Ray Mears on one of them describes making a Canadian birch bark canoe and <clears throat> he used a knife which he called a crook knife crook meaning bent these knives which were made in Sheffield by John Wilson were ordered by the Hudson Bay Company and shipped out to the Hudson Bay Company in the very north of Canada and anybody who wanted in Canada or America, wherever, who wanted these had to go to the Hudson Bay Company for them. But they were made in Sheffield by John Wilson. And as soon as I saw Ray Mears using one, 
I realised it was the identical thing that we had in our collection. So that quite delights me that we found that particular knife.